John here with LPM. A while back, I posted a couple of videos to demonstrate for a friend some free and simple techniques on importing audio content from a CD, trimming that content, and converting it to MP3 format. You can see these videos by clicking right here or find the links in the video description. Similarly, I recently got an email from Jane who was looking for as intuitive a method as possible to extract content from some of her own personal recordings that she has stored in her iTunes library and then convert that content to MP3 files for secondary purposes. Now, admittedly, I like to use Audacity for quite a bit of my audio editing needs. As a free application, it's pretty tough to beat, but it does involve at least a slight learning curve for a novice. And for Jane's purposes, it also features a lot of functions she really doesn't need. Additionally, Audacity is incapable of exporting audio to MP3 files without the help of a secondary encoder. So, unfortunately, despite being one of my favorite go-to apps, it doesn't make the top of my recommended list in this case. Now, Jane is also a Mac user, and so in her case, I've recommended checking out GarageBand for a couple of reasons, not least of which that it comes freely installed on the Mac. Yes, it does involve a slight learning curve also, but to an extent, the interface is designed to conform to the specific needs of a given project. And more to the point for Jane's project, GarageBand has a built-in MP3 encoder and a one-click solution for sourcing content already stored in the iTunes library. Let's check it out. In opening GarageBand, I should note that I'm using version 10 of the application on the OS X Mavericks operating system. This version demonstrates a bit of a departure from the previous interface designs, but the process I outline here is nearly identical. Just note that if you are using an earlier version of GarageBand, some of the features may be in different areas of the interface, and some of your options may be differently labeled. When you launch GarageBand, it may already open up into your most recent GarageBand project, if there are any on your system. Otherwise, it will show you a splash screen like this one prompting you to select which type of project you'll be working on, so that GarageBand can conform the interface accordingly. For our purposes here, we're not really going to be using any of the project-specific features, so it doesn't matter which one we select. But just to keep things simple, let's select Empty Project. Click Choose, and you'll be shown a new drop-down menu, prompting you to create one of three types of audio tracks. Again, it doesn't matter which one you select, so let's just leave it on the default software instrument and click Create. You are now in the main GarageBand workspace with a floating virtual keyboard in the foreground. And you can just close that as we won't need it here. And what you have left is a single blank audio track programmed for a classic electric piano. For now, you can just ignore that track since we won't actually be using that either. But you can't get rid of it just yet, as this version of GarageBand requires at least one track to populate an active interface. And if we delete this one, it'll prompt us to select another track to put there before we can do anything else. At this point, let's remember that our target audio content is located in the iTunes library, and GarageBand lets us access that library directly with this media button right here. Click it to reveal your iTunes content with playlists in this pane and individual audio selections down here in the lower right. You can move this separation bar up or down for a better view of these audio tracks, and you can scroll through them to locate the one you want. If you know the name of the track you're looking for, you can also just type the track name in this search bar. I'm looking for my recording of Animals in the Jungle, and I know the track name, so this makes it very easy to locate. Now that I've found the audio file I want to use, I can simply drag it directly into the workspace, and it populates a new track right below the pre-existing empty piano track. Let's close this media window so we can get a better look at our audio track. You can press the play button here, or just press your spacebar to initiate the start and stop functions to hear your audio. When you do, you'll notice GarageBand by default plays a four count and metronome click over your audio playback. For our purposes, this is annoying, so you can disable them by clicking these purple highlight buttons right here. While we're at it, you'll notice you can also zoom in and out of the track view to get a better look at the visual waveforms of the audio. And since we're here, let's take a moment to slide the whole track over 
so that the start point is at the beginning of the GarageBand track. For my project, what I'm looking to do is locate the sound of a lion roar, which I know to be there somewhere. I can listen to the whole track in order to find it, but I'm also pretty familiar with this piece of audio, and I can guess that such a loud sound probably corresponds with this visual waveform here that shows the audio as getting momentarily louder. I can drag the playhead right to it and listen to see if my guess is correct. It is. Let's zoom in on that area just a bit to get a better look. Now I want to cut everything out of this track except for the lion roar, which I will want to save as a separate MP3 file to use for other media projects. So let's identify where the roar begins and ends. If I place the playhead over the point I want to split the track, I can then do so by looking under the Edit menu and selecting Split Regions at Playhead, or Command-T. This splits my selected track into two segments. I can then click on the segment I want to delete, and press the Delete key on my keyboard, and it's gone. Let's move the playhead to the start of my Lion Roar and replicate the process. Using Command-T to split the audio track, click on the segment I want to remove, and hit my delete key. What I'm left with is just the sound of the lion roar I want to export as a new audio file. If I zoom out, I can see that it's still positioned at the same time slot in the track as it was before. So I want to drag this clip to the start point of the track to eliminate all the blank audio space that comes before it. <laughs> At this point, and not like it really matters since there's nothing there anyway, but if I wanted to eliminate that unused piano track, I can do so by clicking on it, and then looking under the Track menu to select Delete Track. Or I can just right-click or control-click that specific track and select Delete Track, and the unnecessary track disappears. Now, remember to be cautious about which track you highlight when you do this, because you don't want to delete the wrong track. But if you do, remember that you can select Undo from the Edit menu and restore your accidentally deleted track. For my final step, I want to save this piece of audio, the Lion Roar, as an MP3 file. And I find that option under the Share menu. There are several options presented as to how I can save this audio file, but to convert it to MP3, I need to select Export Song to Disk. A new drop-down pane prompts me to give my audio file a name, and designate where I want to save this new file. For now, let's just save it to the desktop so it's easier to find. I can always move it somewhere else later. Finally, I select my desired format of the audio file, either AAC, MP3, or AIFF. An explanation of these formats is beyond the purpose of this video. So for now, let's just select our intended MP3 format. Whichever format you do choose, you can also select the resulting audio quality, keeping in mind that each of the provided options corresponds to either higher or lower quality audio, and with higher or lower corresponding file sizes. With your selection made, click Export. GarageBand will then generate an MP3 file of our intended audio and place it where we designated. So if we click out of GarageBand, we find our new MP3 file on the desktop. Mission accomplished. With the Mac's Quick Look feature, you can single-click on the file and then press your spacebar to give it a quick listen and make sure it turned out to your satisfaction. Now, I feel it's important to add, because people are often surprised by this, that depending upon how your Mac is set up, if you double-click the file to open it up in a media playback application, by default it is likely to open up in iTunes. And as it plays the audio, it will also replicate a copy of this file into your iTunes library. It does this under the pretext that you may want to access your media content through any of your iTunes connected devices like an iPad or Apple TV, etc. And Apple has established iTunes as the hub of your multimedia experience through which to do so. But if you'd rather not replicate all your multimedia files into your iTunes library, you can also right-click on the file, select 
Open With from the resulting contextual menu and choose from any of the applications that are compatible with this format to playback this specific file. I typically prefer to listen to my production audio using the QuickTime player. Your preferences may vary. And if you want this file to be thusly affected in perpetuity, you can select Get Info under the File menu and designate your preferred application through which to play back this file in the future. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and the process simple enough to suit your needs. If you have comments to add or thoughts to share, please feel free to post them in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at DVWatt. Thanks for watching. Thank you.